creating more of that division. I mean, it, it's, it's no coincidence that some of the strongest religious institutions are really opposed to, uh, you know, to working with other groups. I mean, I know that there are certain individuals that think that, uh, I don't know if you know who uh, uh, Karen Armstrong is. Um, she tried to start a foundation uh, called the Charter for Compassion. Her idea was that let's everybody of different faith come together, talk together, and try to work peacefully with one another. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, your reactions are pretty normal. Yeah, there, there is a sort of a thing saying, well, if your beliefs are incompatible, then how exactly are you supposed to work together? Can you ignore the fact that a person believes in God in a completely different way from you? Because your belief would have to, your belief demands that it be the only truth. Religion is incompatible with other religions. I mean, even within denominations of Christianity, there are many elements of Christianity are incompatible with each other, and that is within one religious group. And think about Islam, too. The Sunnis and the Shiites, the, 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 the uh, Kurds, they're not coming back together. They're never going to. I mean, it's the same as Protestants and, and Catholics. They're, tomorrow, they're not really going to join hands and sing Kumbaya with one another. Right? It's not really fucking realistic. I would love to think that people can work within their faiths to communicate with one another. The truth is, it doesn't look like it's that way. We can keep trying. I don't want to shut the door and say, oh, just because you're religion is religious, you can't work for peace. That would be, I think, doing the same thing that religious people do, dismissing them and creating that sense of otherness. And I think that's wrong. I do think that we should work together, but the truth is that we, we refuse to believe what they do, and that scares the hell out of them. I don't know how many people you know that don't believe in, in religion that are scared by atheism. Because it used to be, say, 150 years ago, no one would admit to being an atheist. Nobody. People were even saying that it didn't exist. While there were inquisitions looking for non-believers, you couldn't get anyone in the inquisition to even admit there was such a thing as atheism. They're like, it's impossible. If you were an atheist, your brain would just blow up. There is no way that you could deny God. And yet they were trying to prosecute these people. So there's a weird conundrum there where they thought this was a problem, but they were like, this doesn't exist. And really, it's only been very recently that people like us, non-believers, can come out and talk about it, can, can be open and honest and say, I don't believe. I don't believe in your God. And you do have to watch it. My dad is like, you can't go to North Carolina. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't think it's that bad. You know? it's, it's, well, I mean, in, in different parts of the world, you're right. If you admit that you're an atheist, you will be killed. I mean, just apostasy is a crime in, 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 in most parts of Islam. And apostasy means to just abandon your religion. You might abandon it for another. You might be uh, a Muslim and then decide to be a Christian. Now, that's not good enough. You gotta die. So we are living in a very unique time where we are only now becoming vocal enough, uh, open enough, and brave enough to come out about our, our disbelief. I mean, are there any, is there anybody here that's still kind of in the atheist closet as in don't? Your coworkers don't know, your family doesn't know, you, you, a couple other people? Make sure the bosses don't know. Yeah, if you want a promotion, it's probably best that they don't know. But it, it, we are the most reviled minority in the world, really, now. I mean, when, when they did the survey of finding out, you know, would you rather a African-American president, gay president, or an atheist president, who, who ended up last? Us! I'm like, we just don't believe in your superstition, and meanwhile, we're reviled, we're hated. And it's again what I was saying before, where religious people are afraid of non-belief. They fear it, because as far as they're concerned, God is so great that you should never really question it. There's, it should never enter your mind that he could not exist, and it's a very frightening proposition. And you can understand why people would be worried about that, why they would prosecute people. Well, down here, we're ages. Death. Yeah. Agents of the death one. At least the notion that people have believe in God is it seems to be going Well here's here's the thing. I mean uh, I, I remember hearing recent uh, numbers suggesting what percentage of the population doesn't believe in God. And the number keeps going up. Four to seven percent. Now I think it sits around twelve to fourteen. And I think the number is going to keep going up. And it's not so much that suddenly people are deconverting. It's that now the ones that are like, fucking bullshit, are starting to speak out a little bit more. 
There's a lot of people that are out there that believe in belief. That's what Dan, Dan was talking about, where people are like, belief is important, it gives us values, it keeps us structured together. But as they're starting to notice that, you know, when you don't have religion, you're not suddenly immoral, or you can still, you, you're just as good as you were. Maybe even you're nicer. Maybe. I'm hoping that everybody was real nice. <laughs> But as, the, as this happens, as we start to have more confidence about our lack of belief, other people are sort of like coming on board. They're saying like, yeah, I, I too question these, or I'm not entirely sure if this is true. And they're starting to question. So I would say we, there's probably, in, in my, this is a gross estimate, I might be completely fucking wrong, but I would say roughly 20% of the population probably doesn't believe. Or if, they, or if they're not atheists, they're probably, like most people I know, non-theists. The ones that you sort of ask, do you believe in God or do you not believe in God? They're like, I don't care. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a large uh, part of the population on the planet that doesn't believe in God, but it's very superstitious. You know, Russians don't have a God and the Chinese don't have a God. But if you've ever been over there, their their superstitions run run rampant. Well, in China they have a, what's it called the ancestor worship. So although they don't have a formal religion. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily describe them as atheists per se, because you're right, they are very superstitious. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll pray to their ancestors, they'll leave uh, you know, vestiges and things like that. So do I consider uh, Chinese to be atheists? Bad atheists, maybe. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is that they're common denominator over the whole planet, over, this, over the, the belief in the superstition, and, and the belief that there must be something else out there. It's some kind of a coping skill. It's it's something that humans seem to have to uh, um, to deal like with your panic attacks. I mean, you know, I just recently let go of the fact that there's an afterlife, and it was really hard. I mean, it was just it was really hard because I, I always, even though I never believed in God, I believed that you know at some point in time I get to see my uncle James again. And, you know, our, you know, our, 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 yeah, it, it, one of the things that I I, I talked to. Uh, People who used to believe, because again, I, I've never really experienced this. Right? I was never a believer, but for a lot of people who abandon religion, the one thing they say is, "The worst day was when I had to kill off everybody that I ever loved." You know, it's a common thing where you're just like, "I just had to realize that I would never see them again," and I think it goes to demonstrate what kind of a species we really are—that we can love people so much that we're not willing to abandon our belief that we'll see them again. There is something that is kind of sweet about that, you know, about us, in that sense. I think it's actually a really redeemable quality. But just because you want something to be true doesn't mean that it is. And I think that, that, is, that that's kind of what I was saying before with intellectual integrity. You have to be honest with yourself about the evidence. And the honest truth is if something's too good to be true, it probably is. How good does heaven sound, everybody? Pretty fucking awesome, right? You're like, hey, you get to do whatever the hell you want. You get to party with people that you love, except for the ones that are gay or in hell. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there is, there is this tendency to... To, 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 to wish for things. We're wishful creatures. I mean, it's, I, I don't know if there's any other species on this planet that is as wishful as we are. Maybe that's kind of a thing that's unique to us. We just wish that things were true. And sometimes we can get in trouble. You know, wishful thinking is not always the best thing. Okay, I'm, let, me, let me just cut it. Let me just slow down a little bit here. I want to actually get some, again, I, I said that I wanted more participation. I feel like I've been going on and on and not having to actually ask any questions. So I want people to start asking questions because this is what this is all about. Anybody got a question? Yes, you. Uh, more of a statement than a question. Okay. And coming from a, 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 a position of belief through most of my life, I can speak to the fact of what you need to go through to arrive to an atheistic worldview. And the way you do it, and I think this is fairly universal for people of faith to lose the faith, you have to come to a point where you have to accept the truth over comfort. You can put it in any other terminology you want. But that's what it boils down to. You, you get to the point. Evolutionarily, we have developed some things that give us comfort. Superstitions, religion, as a species, they do give us comfort. And to break through that, you have to accept the truth. Accept knowledge over emotion, knowledge over comfort. That's not and that's not easy. No. 